So, Assalamu alaikum, uh, dear students. Uh, uh, the today's session we will discuss about the uh, sub equilibrium space. Uh, um, sub equilibrium space uh, that is the space just below the uh, equilibrium, um, as well as it, we can consider that that space is present uh, just above the uh, humeral head. That's why the sub equilibrium space is also known as the uh, suprahumeral space. Uh, this process, this is the equilibrium, this is the coracoid process, and that junction between this area, uh, that area is known as the coracoequilibrium uh, arch. Uh, so this space um, that is present just uh, lateral to that arch between the coracoid process and the uh, equilibrium. Uh, a number of structures uh, that may be present here, uh, almost six to seven structures, they are present here in this space. And if there is narrowing of this space, uh, either uh, by the different reasons, for example, it may be because of the, um, the spurs and the um, different equilibrium process or the uh, coracoid process. Uh, that may be the um, more elongation in field of that acromion uh, process. It may be hypertrophy of the ligament which is present between the uh, acromion and the coracoid, the coracoacromion ligament. Um, there may be some other reasons as well, uh, but when there is stiffness at the AC joint, in that case, when there is no upward movement of this AC joint during the elevation. Uh, during the flexion, during the scaption, during the abduction. So in that case, there will be narrowing, uh, we can say that stenosis of this uh, area, uh, which will lead to, to the pinching of the muscles and other structures which are present here. Specifically, the two structures which are present here, uh, this is the subacromial bursa, which is present here, and the supraspinatus tendon, which just passes below uh, this joint. So during uh, the narrowing of this space, uh, the, there may be some pinching and there may be some damage to these two structures. So the structures which are present uh, in this, uh, they are the six, seven structures. Uh, the long head of bicep, uh, this is the long head of bicep which is present in this space. Uh, the short head of bicep that is being uh, attached to the coracoid process. So that is not present here in this space. The superior capsule of the shoulder joint, uh, as well as the supraspinatus tendon, uh, that is the supraspinatus tendon which just passing uh, below that um, lateral end of the clavicle as well as the acromion. The subacromial bursa, which is uh, present just below that uh, acromion, as well as the upper margin of the subscapulars in the prospinatus tendon, they also um, pass there, and as well as the inferior surface of the AC joint. So, if there is a narrowing of this uh, area, there may lead to the uh, damage, uh, they may lead to the pinching of these structures, which will lead to the other syndromes. Um, this uh, subacrum express. The clinical relevance of this cell is that uh, um, there may be impingement uh, due if there is stenosis of this area. So the awareness of impingement during the elevation of the arm that requires uh, what it requires it requires the external rotation of the humerus. And why this uh, external rotation of humerus required? Because during the uh, elevation. Uh, the external rotation of the humerus that uh, shift that greater tuberosity away from that space. It means there is no just uh, um, hitting a soft structure by this greater tuberosity. So during elevation, ele um, elevation uh, mean that may be in the if it is in the sagittal plane, it is flexion. If it is in the scapular plane, it is the scapion, and if it is the uh, coronal or the frontal plane, it is the abduction in all the three forms of elevation uh, the external rotation of the humerus is necessary and why it is required because just to clear the greater tuberosity from the vein as well as we also need the upward rotation of the scapula to elevate the lateral end of the 
uh, acrumen because if the lateral end of the acrumen is not elevated they will be um, snaring and stenosis of that uh, space which will lead to the further syndromes so on the basis of the etiology um, the impingement in the subacrumen space are the suprahumeral space that may be of two types the primary impingement or the secondary impingement primary impingement mean if the, it is because of the, some structural deformity anomaly and that may be from the abnormal acromion process uh, and secondary impingement means the impingement is only present when, during some moment during some function so that's why the stenosis the narrowing uh, there in that subacromial space is known as the functional stenosis and uh, the gall the glenohumeral joint the glenohumeral joint is a uh, one of the larger joint of the human body and beside the hip joint and that small joint inside the ear this is the third example of the ball and socket joint so this is a ball and socket a uh, synovial diarthrodial joint in which uh, the lateral uh, surface um, in, in which the round head of the humerus that simply articulated with the shallow glenoid fossa of the uh, scapula. Um, this joint uh, is uh, as the glenoid fossa which we have discussed that it is just like the pear shape and it is um, also known as the puriform uh, fossa. It is very less dipped uh, and that's why it is uh, it make is very unstable joint. So the glenoid hemorrhoid joint uh, that required very high stability uh, and that stability is being provided by um, uh, static structures as well as the dynamic structures and those static structures and this, that is the uh, initial uh, which uh, is provided stability and that is the glenoid labrum uh, as well as the other um, static stabilizers they are the ligaments of the uh, glenoid humeral joint which will be discussed in the upcoming slides um, we said that the dynamic uh, stabilizers they are the different muscles specifically the uh, rotator cuff muscle that is these minor muscles the infraspinatus the supraspinatus and the subscapularis muscles uh, beside these four muscles of the uh, sits because these four muscles of the rotator cuff, the adultoid muscles, the upper trapezius muscles, the serratus anterior muscles, all these muscles that give the uh, stability, dynamic stability to the glenohumeral joint in the surrounding. Uh, as the humeral head is larger than the glenoid fossa, um, so that's why um, this these two surfaces are highly incongruent. And this glenoid labrum, uh, which is a fibrocartilaginous rim, which is not actually a fibrocartilage, but it is thought that it is being a fibrocartilaginous structure. This glenoid labrum that increases that congruency and increases the depth of that uh, glenoid fossa or the uh, furiform articular surface. Uh, at any point during the elevation of the shoulder, only a small portion of the humeral head, um, usually 25 to 30 percent, that is in contact with the linear fossa. So these uh, um, shoulder joint that need high quality and high security, and that security and that stability is provided by static stabilizer by the labrum as well as the capsular ligaments which are the uh, superior glenohumeral ligament, the middle glenohumeral ligament and a series of different beds um, which combined in known as the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. Uh, while these are being uh, provided dynamically stabilized by the deltoid uh, as well as upper trip and the other four members of the rotator cuff. So as we look at this picture, a very small portion of the, this um, humeral head is being in contact with this glenoid fossa. As the glenoid itself means a shallow cup. So that is the Latin word which means that. So uh, because of that uh, small dip and as well as small portion of the humeral head is in contact, high security, high stability needed here which is provided by the structures which were mentioned earlier. So uh, this is that um, pier like structures known as the glenoid fossa uh, then the gray color in the surrounding this is the glenoid labrum which uh, not only uh, increase the depth of this fossa but also give 
uh, stability to the shoulder joint. On the other hand, the labrum, uh, and there are some ligaments which are known as the super, superior glenohumeral ligament, uh, the middle glenohumeral ligament, and as well as the interior uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. And this inferior glenohumeral ligament complex, this is a series of bands which such as the uh, axillary pouch, the interior band, and the posterior band. So these three um, bands, the interior band, the axillary band or pouch, and the posterior band, they are collectively known as the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex. In all these three ligaments, the superior glenohumeral ligament, the middle glenohumeral ligament, and this uh, inferior complex, that are simply known as, uh, combined known as the capsular ligaments. So these ligaments plus labrum, they provide the static stability, while these muscles the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, uh, the subscapularis, and the teres minor. These four muscles are the members of the uh, rotator cuff. And beside these, uh, these four members, uh, the dentide muscles that also give stability. So, glenoid labrum, as we have discussed, that the articular surface of the glen, uh, the glenoid fossa that is too shallow. That's why the glenoid labrum. Uh, that is present there just to increase the uh, depth of the uh, structure. And this structure, the glenoid labrum, that is surrounded and is attached to the periphery of the glenoid fossa. Uh, and one more thing, this glenoid labrum that is usually loosely attached superiorly, but uh, if we look at this picture, so superiorly it is much loosely attached as compared to its inferior, it is very firmly attached uh, inferiorly. So uh, that and this glenoid labrum that increase the depth of that uh, curvature that depth uh, of that uh, uh, glenoid fossa are the filiform particular surface by approximately uh, fifty percent. Uh, so as that was previously um, being considered in the literature that it is a uh, fibrocartilage which is lined by the synovium, but the recent research that have been revealed that either it is not a fibrocartilage synovium line but it is a redundant fold of this fibroconnective tissue. So superiorly it is loosely attached as compared to the inferior where it is very firmly attached. Uh, and mostly the inferiorly it is usually immobile. The glenoid labrum that also serve the attachment site for the different structures like the like uh, the tendon of the long head of the bicep brachii that is present in this uh, diagram. Uh, that is the long head of the bicep which is being attached to the superior uh, labrum. While the short head of the uh, bicep that is being attached to the uh, chromium, uh, sorry, the coracoid process. Uh, let's discuss about something with the capsule of the glenohumeral ligament. Uh, the entire glenohumeral joint that is being surrounded by a large loose capsule, uh, which is uh, very taut superiorly, and as compared to that, it is very loose and slack inferiorly and also interiorly. Um, but that, that depend also on the position of the uh, human arm that in which position the arm is as this um, characteristic of um, tautness and the slackness that changes when they are changing in the position. So if the arm is in the resting position then uh, superiorly it will be very taut as compared to the um, in, interiorly in the front and below where it will be a very slacky position. The capsule surface that is uh, larger than the humeral head and obviously that is uh, it should be larger as it is going to cover that head. So its area is twice to the humeral head and more than 2.5 cm of the distraction of the head uh, from that uh, piriform surface that is being uh, allowed by this um, uh, capsule surface. As it is larger so there is a big space for the humeral head to move. Uh, to distract from its um, opposite partner which is the piriform articular surface. Uh, the, there is some laxity in the capsule uh, 
but that leg jitty is very necessary for that uh, excursion of the joint surfaces if there is there was no leg jitty then there will be no such uh, that small uh, excursion of the uh, as well as the large excursion of the joint uh, which uh, uh, for the shoulder joint but this also provides some little stability without the reinforcement of the ligament and muscles and this loose uh, uh, leg jitty of the capsule that have no such big role in the stability so that's need the ligaments and muscles um, for the stability so that's uh, uh, capsule is not um, a big contributor in the stability of the shoulder joint uh, as it is uh, counted in the static stability but its contribution is very little as compared to the um, ligament and the muscles so uh, it need the reinforcement of the ligaments and muscle uh, to provide stability to the shoulder joint as shoulder joint is one of the two mobile joint that's why um, it uh, it is more prone to all different um, injuries and it is one of those joints which is very commonly dislocated and subluxed specifically in sports and in sports specifically in the pitching during the pitching uh, as there is too much external rotation in that uh, during the pitching so during the pitching at the um, second and third phase of that pitching the shoulder joint is very prone to all that subluxation or the um, dislocation uh, when the humerus uh, is abducted in the corodal plane in the frontal plane uh, and laterally rotated in the glenoid fossa and then there is a, a, a twist in the capsule and that capsule twist in itself and tightens making an abduction and lateral rotation as the close back position of the glenohumeral joint so dear students it should be remembered to all of you that what is the close back position of the glenohumeral joint that is the uh, sl uh, abduction and slight uh, lateral rotation remember the lateral rotation is not too much uh, required for the close back position simply the abduction and then some degrees of the lateral rotation so this is the uh, glenohumeral joint and this is that uh, glenohumeral joint capsule uh, which is very uh, tart at the superiorly as compared to the uh, in Inferiorly, inferiorly and anteriorly it is much slacking in position this is the supraspinous tendon which is a member of the uh, rotator cuff and that is the deltaid and all these muscles and as well as those capsular ligaments they provide static and dynamic stability to the, this surface this to this joint the glenohumeral joint are simply known as the shoulder joint there are three ligaments uh, which uh, we can combine in known as the uh, capsular ligaments are simple the shoulder ligaments the shoulder joint ligaments and these ligaments are the superior glenohumeral ligament the middle glenohumeral ligament and then the uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament complex which is itself consists of three bands uh, the interior band the posterior band and the axillary band or the axillary pouch so these are the three uh, ligaments uh, there is the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex and the middle and superior glenohumeral ligaments and these uh, ligament ligament they reinforce the provide the reinforcement to the glenohumeral ligament capsule uh, and providing the static stability to the uh, shoulder joint along with the uh, glenoid labrum so these are the three uh, ligaments the middle glenohumeral ligament, superior glenohumeral ligament, and this uh, IGHLC, which means the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex, which is made up the anterior band, axillary band, and the posterior band. Now, uh, these ligaments they are restrained to some motion uh, during the external rotation. Um, these uh, 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 ligaments they provide restraint but it depends on the arm position that uh, different arm position different uh, ligaments they provide the restraint to the external rotation so if there is zero degree external rotation it means when the arm is in the resting stage that is resting to the side of the body uh, then uh, the restraint are the superior glenohumeral ligament the coracohumeral ligament and the subscapular as well as when there is 45 degree of the external rotation the 
uh, superior glenohumeral ligaments and the middle glenohumeral ligament uh, and at the 90 degree of the external rotation the interior bend only of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex and that provide the uh, restraint to the external rotation if you look at, at this uh, image at this slide um, the superior and middle they are active at the 45 degree but when it reach to 90 degree then these ligaments they are unable to provide uh, that restraint that resistance that control over the external rotation and then the interior band which is uh, in front band of the uh, below ligament which is the inferior glenohumeral complex that then provide so it means uh, an external rotation uh, uh, 90 or above 90 only the interior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex that provide their restraint um, restraint to the internal rotation again that depend on the um, arm position but one thing it should, it should be noted that all types of the uh, internal rotation at, at all positions of the shoulder uh, the stability at the restraint and the control is provided by the uh, inferior glenohumeral ligament complex at zero degree internal rotation the posterior band is active while at 45 degree the interior and posterior bands of the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex they provide the restraining to the internal rotation while uh, at the same ligaments they also provide those restraining to the internal rotation when the arm position is at 90 degree so this is the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex when there is medial rotation or internal rotation of the humerus this ligament that control uh, this moment and that provide as a restraint to this moment uh, inferior translation um, the superior ligament usually uh, they will provide uh, those restraint to the inferior translation if it is the zero degree then uh, the uh, superior glenohumeral ligament as well as the correct humeral ligaments these will uh, provide their restraining to the inferior to the downward movement to the inferior translation to the downward trans uh, translation um, but if if the uh, shoulder arm is being present at 90 degree uh, then uh, of elevation then the inferior glenohumeral ligament complex they will restrain and they will control the inferior translation as if it is present inferiorly so this ligament they will provide that control that will um, coordinate and will just restrain the inferior translation um, if you talk about the glenohumeral motion uh, in the scapular plane so uh, scapular plane is the plane which is present at 45 degree of both the coronal plane and the uh, sagittal plane uh, the flexion and extension range of motion that is 120 abduction and reduction is 120 external and internal rotation is also present here and uh, we can that is almost 90 and horizontal uh, abduction and reduction so these four moments are usually uh, done in the scapular plane. These moments can also be the abduction adduction is in the uh, coronal plane or the frontal plane uh, and the flexion extension is in the sagittal plane. While scapion is the specific movement of the shoulder jet which is elevation of the shoulder jet um, that scapion and descapion they are the movement of the scapular plane. Uh, scapular thoracic joint which is the another uh, component of that shoulder complex uh, as we have discussed in the start that shoulder complex is made of uh, five joints um, one, three of them are the true joints and two of them are the uh, false joints and we can say that they are not, not the true joints but their movement and their contribution that is very vital and very important and they are necessary for the normal function of the shoulder or the shoulder complex. So scapulothoracic is just articulation between the scapula and the uh, ribs of the chest uh, and these articulation these are not the true articulation they don't have any capsule uh, but their moments between the two they are very important so they are very critical to the joint motion so these scapulothoracic is with the articulation are the moment between uh, the scapula and the thoracic cage 
the history joint during the humeral elevation uh, flexion abduction and scapion scapion is the moment which is in the scapular plane as we have discussed that the um, scapion is the scapular plane is present at 45 degree from both um, if we are considered as a sagittal plane or the coronal plane so at the moment this uh, plane is present the scapula and humerus uh, that um, humors that must move in a very synchronous fashion and the, the the term for that the synchronous fashion that synchronous moment combined moment is known as the scapular humor uh, rhythm uh, the total range is 180 and in this 180 the contribution of the humors uh, the, we can say that the glenny humeral joint contribution is 120 and the remaining 60 degree is of the scapular moment if a person is uh, being um, suffered with um, a scapular dyskinesia uh, and there is no movement of the scapula, there is abnormal movement, then there will be um, disturbance um, and there will be absence or uh, lacking of this scapular rhythm. So, uh, to achieve that 180 degree of the elevation, uh, the shoulder joint near the scapular movement. Without the movement of the scapula, the shoulder joint will uh, only move up to 120. So the ratio between this uh, total range of uh, scapular moment and the uh, glenohumeral moment that is two ratio and two is uh, the glenohumeral and one is the scapular. Negative of the glenohumeral to scapular moment after uh, 30 degree of abduction and 45 to 60 degree of flexion as after that the scapular moment will start. Uh, the scapular humeral rhythm during the humeral elevation uh, the scapula upward rotate, posterior tips and externally rotate, elevates and as well as retracts. So these are the different uh, mechanics of the shoulder complex, specifically the scapula and the humerus during the scapular humeral rhythm. So these are the scapular rotation. If this is the humerus, this is the linear humeral joint. Uh, this is the scapula. So the uh, rotation at that direction will be known as the upward rotation and the rotation in that will be downward rotation. If you look at the lateral view, this moment when uh, the top of the um, scapula, if it is moved backward and inferiorly, it will be known as the interior rotation. At the same time, the inferior edge, the inferior angle of the scapula there will move interiorly. So, an opposite moment when the uh, inferior angle of the scapula, if it is going in the backward direction and interior translation, anterior, in, interior inferior translation of this top of the scapula, then that will be known as the interior tilting. So, these are uh, moments, two moments. Uh, if we look at from its uh, superior, so uh, the this is the external rotation this is the internal rotation so the upward uh, and the uh, and downward rotation they are being present in the uh, that coronal plane while the external rotation and the uh, downward rotation this is just present in that uh, transverse plane when it is moving in the um, one side to another side in transverse the static stabilization of the glenohumeral joint uh, we have discussed that that is being provided by the um, glenoid labrum as well as the capsule and as well as uh, some other um, ligaments strong ligaments for the uh, shoulder joint um, in a translation in the uh, glenohumeral joint that will produce a negative pressure and that negative pressure which is naturally present in the uh, hip joint these negative pressure that will resist the inferior translation and hence that will provide some stability to the uh, shoulder joint as compared to the hip joint uh, the articular surfaces of the glenohumeral joints they are highly incongruent the congruency is uh, too much higher in the shoulder joint as compared to the hip joint that's why and uh, it is one of the most common dislocated and subluxed of the human body. Uh, the line of gravity that also pull the humeral head inferiorly again which will uh, increase the demand for the static and the dynamic stabilizer. Uh, so uh, to uh, compensate and just to counter uh, this um, in 
inferior pulling up the line of gravity and uh, there is a need of equal uh, and opposite direction pull uh, for the stabilization and that upward pull which is equal in magnitude but in opposite direction uh, that could be supplied by the uh, dynamic stabilizer which are the muscles and these muscles are specifically the deltoid uh, the supraspinatus muscle and the long head of the bicep but uh, sometimes uh, in some researches they have revealed that the uh, electromyogram report they have showed that these muscles are electrically silent so again there is some uh, near uh, debate on the action of these muscles and uh, so the stabilization of this dependent position is passive uh, as the EMG shows that these muscles are silent which means and that they have no role in providing the stability so that's a proof that the stability which is provided which is countered the line of gravity that is being provided by the passive stabilizer or we can say that the static stabilizer and what are the different components of the static stabilizer this is the superior capsule that is the correct hebrew ligament that is the superior glenohumeral ligament uh, these are structures are taught superiorly and that's why uh, their tautness is very necessary just to uh, encounter the that inferior directed um, pull of the line of gravity so these tightness of the um, superior glenohumeral ligament superior capsule uh, and the correct ligament they encounter uh, the line of gravity pull uh, which in the equal mag with equal magnitude but opposite in direction the resultant pull of the line of gravity in these structures create a force which a resultant force which uh, compresses the head in the glenoid fossa and thus there is a stability uh, to the glenohumeral joint so uh, the static stabilization again um, the very big role um, by that uh, inclination uh, glenoid inclination uh, as this inclination degree inclination um, there is if there is upward inclination um, either structurally or by upward scapular rotation and said to be just most inferior translation of the humeral head so that's why we need um, the, um, the articular surface of the glenoid fossa which is the piriform surface that is highly uh, that is usually upward uh, upward inclined because that upward inclination will resist more inferior translation. If the arm is loaded and added with some uh, external force, then the passive restraints they are not enough to provide that stability, and uh, so that they are, will be inadequate to resist that inferior translation. At that time, then the supraspinatus is being uh, activated, and supraspinatus, uh, as it is attached to the capsule structures, that will provide the stability. So when there is external load on the shoulder joints, then the ligaments they are unable to provide that security and stability. Hence, um, then. Uh, there is a recruitment of the um, superior uh, member of the rotator cuff which is the supraspinatus um, and with that this muscle is to attach to the capsule structure so it can provide uh, the uh, resistance to the right inferior translation in the presence of some external load if there is a paralysis of this supraspinatus so it will cause um, lacking of this their contribution uh, in the presence of some load so which will lead to the inferior subluxation of the humeral head uh, due to the sustained forces which will cause the capsule to be legs so hence this muscle is very important after the uh, capsular structures uh, specifically when there is a shoulder is beat facing some external load uh, the dynamic stabilization of the glenohumeral giant that is mean um, provided by the deltoid and the other uh, rotator cuff uh, muscles so the deltoid is usually a premier for the friction that is specifically the we can specifically say that the anterior deltoid is the premier for the flexion of the shoulder the medial deltoid is the premier for the abduction however the result and action of these two muscles the uh, middle and uh, the interior deltoid they are used in the stabilization of the glenohumeral joint as well 
and the other muscles which providing the dynamic stability to the glenohumeral hemorrhoids they are the rotator cuff muscles and they are four in number the supraspinatus the infraspinatus the teres minor and the subscapularis muscle these muscles are uh, commonly known as the um, rotator cuff muscle which can be remembered by the acronym uh, sets muscle uh, among these four muscles on the supraspinatus resultant force is um, from superiorly and the remaining three uh, are carb similar in that resultant force so if we look at the supraspinatus muscle uh, that is uh, and why it is known as supraspinatus muscle because this muscle is present above the spine of the uh, scapula that's why this is known as the supraspinatus muscle infraspinatus muscle the muscle which is below infra i mean below uh, the spine of the scapula is known as the infra uh, spinous muscle teres minor um, muscle uh, and then the subscapularis muscle which is present at the subscapular uh, fossa so all these muscles uh, that provide uh, the st uh, dynamic stabilization to the shoulder joint uh, if we look at the uh, biomechanics of these muscles, um, the resultant force of the um, that supraspinatus uh, that is uh, two forces that is the F Y uh, that is the F X. So the emperor spinatus, uh, the teres minor, and the subscapularis muscle, they uh, individually or together have a similar line up. Well, the this is the rotatory component. The F Y this is the rotatory component. Um, that compresses the humeral head inside the glenoid fossa uh, as well as uh, it helps uh, upset the superior uh, translatory pull of the deltoid. Uh, on the other hand, the supraspinatus has a superiorly directed uh, translatory component FX as compared to the these three muscles which having the um, the FX translatory component is being present in the downward direction. So th there is that change. This is supraspinatus. These are the three muscles. So biomechanically, the supraspinatus is the superior muscles to the capsule. That's why it is uh, required and recruited uh, when we need when there is a need of the uh, inferior trans uh, translation. So even the load increases and the capsule ligaments and the capsule and the labrum they are unable to provide stability So the supraspinatus that is then provide that stability as it is uh, present superiorly So the supraspinatus has a superiorly directed uh, translatory component FX and a rotatory component which known as the FY uh, That is more compressive than that of the other rotator cuff muscles uh, So the resultant will be uh, that will help in the uh, suppression uh, compression uh, of the that femoral head inside the fossa. These are the actual line of the four segments of the uh, rotator cuff. This is the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the sub in the scapularis muscle and the teres minor. All these forces um, direct line of full they are in the uh, inferior direction in fury middle direction while the action the line and pull of the superior supraspinatus is the superior medial direction so unlike the rotator cuff muscle uh, the supraspinatus has uh, as a superior translatory component as we have discussed in the previous image uh, so the supraspinatus muscle rotatory component is larger than that of the uh, rotatory uh, components if we look at uh, this uh, uh, FY that is much larger than the FY uh, and the length of this line that indicate how much magnitude it has so this is much larger than the these other components of the uh, rotator cuff the supraspinatus has a large movement arm um, and that is capable of independently producing abduction full range of the hemorrhoid simultaneously stabilizing it. The moment arm can be defined as the distance between the instant axis of rotation of a joint and the line um, of pull of any muscles. And that moment arm uh, is uh, directly proportional to the distance. If it is too much larger, then the muscle will be mostly involved kinetically the muscle will have kinetic function um, 
if the distance to the instant axis of rotation is uh, very less then the muscle will be very less involved in the kinetic function and most of the time such muscles which uh, with short movement of they will provide stability uh, stabilize stable stabilization to the joint instead of some kinetic so as the movement of the supraspiratus that is uh, larger than the other three muscles so beside the stabilizing action of the supraspiratus uh, this uh, there is also a kinetic function of the supraspiratus as well and that function is the uh, abduction usually this supraspinatus is the initiator for the abduction uh, the first 30 degree abduction is being caused by the supraspinatus muscle and if this muscle is uh, unable to produce yeah, this is being flaccid or is weak then there may be some difficulty in the abduction for the patient so and this uh, um, capability of its producing abduction is just because of its large movement arm uh, which is not present in case of the other three members of the rotator cuff, the subscapularis, the teres minor, and the emperor muscle. So, what is that uh, moment arm? Moment arm is that uh, uh, distance between the instant axis of rotation and then, then the line up, pull up in a specific muscle. Uh, this concept can be applied to the muscles in the lumbar region. If we look at the lumbar region, uh, erectus spinae uh, superior muscles, they are working uh, for to cause extension of the lumbar spine. But the deep fibers of the erectus spinae, uh, they do not cause extension of the lumbar spine. They are providing stability uh, to the lumbar spine because the deep fibers of the erectus spinae they have short movement of they are unable to produce those kinetic uh, function as compared to the superficial so the same muscle because of that short and long movement of uh, some muscles some uh, the superficial posterior fibers of the um, erectus spinae they are the prime mover for the stabilization for the extension of globally for the complete um, the lumbar region and uh, while the same muscles deep fibers which have a short moment arm they are not going to cause any extension but are involved in the stabilization similarly if you look at the multifidus muscle multifidus muscles again um, that is more involved uh, in the stabilization as such as as well as the uh, spinalis and the uh, rotators as these have a very short movement arm uh, that's why uh, they are involved more in stabilization if we look at the semispinalis which is superficial to the multifidus so that uh, um, semispinalis of the lumbar region that is more involved in the extension as compared to the multifidus which most of the time is involved in the providing the dynamic stabilization to the lumbar region so here the same concept is the supraspinatus has a large movement arm and uh, that's why it is capable of producing that abduction um, and which is required for the full range of the uh, glenohumeral joint and st simultaneously it also pro pro providing stability to the uh, shoulder joint so gravity also play a role in the stabilizing by uh, upsetting the upward pull of the supraspinatus and the deltoid muscles now what is the role of the long head of bicep in the glenohumeral stabilization the long head of the bicep uh, brachii uh, that runs superiorly from the anterior shaft of the humerus to that bicepital groove uh, bicepital groove is present at the shaft of the upper part of the humerus uh, and that between the two uh, tubercles of the humerus the greater and the lesser tubercle and then it move upward and just attach to the superior uh, surface uh, we can say that the superior part of the glenoid, um, the supraglenoid tubercle and the superior labrum. So this uh, long head of the bicep uh, uh, that enter into the joint capsule uh, through an opening between the supraspinatus muscle and the subscapularis muscle uh, where it penetrate the capsule but uh, remember this muscle is present outside the synovium there is no penetration of the synovium by this tendon but it penetrate the capsule between the two muscles supraspinatus and the subscapularis muscle
This bicep long head uh, this is capable of contributing to the force of flexion and it can if the humerus is laterally rotated contribute to the force of abduction as well as well as it has some contribution in the anterior stabilization to the shoulder joint. So this is a, a bicep muscle. This is the short head of bicep which is attached. This is the acromion uh, uh, coracoid process. So this short head of the bicep that is being attached to the coracoid process while this long head then they move in the bicepital groove and just move uh, to the top of the fuel head where it is attached to the supraglenoid tubercle as well as it is blend and it is attached with the superior labrum. So this uh, uh, beside its main function it is a uh, flexor it can also give interior stability uh, and sometimes to the joint. So uh, these are some of the comparison between the um, pairing of the pic uh, pectoral cradle and the shoulder joint movements so when uh, there is abduction it requires the upward rotation of the shoulder girdle when during the abduction of the shoulder joint uh, and there is a couple moment of the downward rotation of the shoulder girdle it means for the normal abduction of the shoulder joint the, we need uh, the scapular downward rotation so these moments these are couple moment known as the couple moment couple moment are those moment uh, which are occurring simultaneously with each other and if one is absent the lacking then the other will be also disturbed so during the abduction of the shoulder joint uh, there is scapular upward rotation uh, or we can say that also known as the shoulder girdle while the abduction uh, during the abduction there is a downward rotation of the scapula similarly during the moment in the um, sagittal plane during the flexion and extension there is a upward and downward rotation as well but along with the uh, during the flexion not only upward rotation but it we also require elevation of the complete um, acromion and complete uh, scapula and during the extension when we come back from the extension so the upward rotation that convert into the downward rotation and the elevated uh, scapula that is being diffused as well as during the extension there is downward and posterior rotation of the humeral head as well while in the internal rotation of the shoulder joint uh, usually uh, there is uh, abduction uh, simply known as the protection of the uh, scapula or the shoulder girdle uh, during the external rotation um, there is adduction or retraction with horizontal abduction and adduction there is also uh, adduction and abduction of the shoulder girdle so some of the muscles which are uh, surrounding the pectoral girdle uh, they are being divided into two groups muscles of the thorax that move the pectoral girdle and muscles of the thorax that move the humerus so some of the muscles which move the scapula uh, they uh, are divided into two muscles they are the interior thoracic muscles and the posterior thoracic muscle and on the other hand those muscles which will move uh, the humerus and these are the muscle of the thorax but act on the humerus they are divided into again two muscles two groups uh, the axial muscles that move the humerus and the scapular muscles and that move the humerus so muscle of the thorax uh, which move the pectoral girdle uh, they are divided into interior thoracic muscle and the posterior thoracic muscles so the muscles which are in the interior thoracic muscle uh, they are the uh, subclavius muscle, the pectoralis minor muscle, and the, as well as the serratus anterior. Uh, on the other hand, uh, some there are other muscles uh, like uh, which uh, move uh, the pectoral cadre, which move the scapula, and the muscles are they, they are the muscle of the thorax. So they are the uh, fibers of the trapezius, the uh, upper trapezius, the levator scapula the rhombite minor and the rhombite major the levator scapula and the upper trap they are mostly elevate the scapula um, and the rhombite minor and major they uh, retract the scapula
but the levator scapulae that is um, uh, and the uh, fibrin atrophy just upper trap they both work uh, one uh, muscle is elevating the medial uh, side and the other is elevating the lateral border of the scapula so both muscles are required for the elevation uh, of the scapula yeah these muscles are active when we are going to shrug our uh, muscles on the other hand uh, number of muscles uh, which are the thorax muscle thoracic muscle but their action is uh, on the humerus instead of the that scapula they are again divided into two groups the axial muscle and the scapular muscles the muscles which are in the axial muscles they are two in number the pectoralis uh, major and the latissimus dorsi. Uh, the latissimus dorsi is basically a muscle of the back, uh, and uh, the dorsi here it means that back. Where the latissimus that is a Latin word which means the broadest. The word latissimus means broad, and latissimus means broadest. So latissimus dorsi means by the with respect to the area of the muscle, this is the most broadest muscle of the back. That's why it is known as the uh, latissimus uh, dorsi. Uh, pectoralis major major means this is the larger muscle which make the chest is known as the the pectoralis major as the pecto the pect mean the chest. So pectoralis means for formation of forming the chest major mean the large muscles so these two are the axial muscle and there are some uh, scapular muscles which will uh, act on the humerus which will move the humerus in any direction and these uh, scapular muscle of the thorax they are the uh, fibers of the deltoid uh, the rotator cuff muscles um, four members of the rotator cuff the emperor spinatus teres major subscapularis and the supraspinatus muscle as well as the teres major, the coracobrachialis, uh, and the long and short head of the bicep. Coracobrachialis, along with the short head of bicep, they both uh, have uh, attachment on the coracoid process. So, not only the um, um, that uh, coracobrachialis, but the short head of bicep, both are attached to the uh, co coracoid parts of the scapula and the long head of the tricep as well they have some action on the humerus so all these muscles they are the thoracic muscles and they can be uh, divided into two scapular muscles as well as the uh, axial muscles now uh, let's come towards the last topic of today uh, session that is the origin insertion and the action of and as well as the nerve supply of the different muscles of the um, back and all those muscles which are discussed in the previous slides um, thoracic muscle which move the humerus the axial muscle scapular muscles will be discussed separately as well as those thoracic muscles which move the pectoral cradle that may be interior thoracic muscle or posterior thoracic muscle that will be also discussed separately and one by one so the first of those that is the subclavius uh, muscle uh, why this muscle is known as the subclavius muscle which is present uh, below the clavicle sub bead below and clavius bead that is the clavicle so the muscle present below the clavicle is known as the subclavius muscle uh, it's originated from the first rib and specifically more from the costocartilage of the first rib and that then inserted on the inferior surface of the lateral uh, clavicle so that um, muscle is present uh, below the clavicle and run from medial towards that later uh, its action is the depression and um, movement of the clavicle interiorly as this muscle is present below the clavicle so when it is contracted it will just move that clavicle in the downward direction as well as it will uh, rotate that clavicle in the interior direction uh, stabilizing action of the subclavicular muscle is that it uh, stabilizes the pectoral girdle uh, as well and the subclavian nerve uh, which is present now present inside that uh, below that clavian clavicle that supply this muscle the pectoralis minor uh, this is a small muscle uh, which is present uh, this is the pectoralis uh, minor 
uh, this is the pectoralis major three headed uh, while this is the major muscle pectoralis major so this pectoralis uh, major muscles uh, that is the third muscle which is being attached to the coracoid fascis as we have discussed uh, in the previous slide that the total number of muscles which are attached to the coracoid fascis of the scapula there are three in number so one of them is the pectoralis minor and the other two muscles which are attached to the uh, process of the uh, coracoid fascis they are the short head of the bicep uh, as well as the coracobrachialis muscles so these three muscles they have exertion on the coracoid parts of the scapula uh, this pectoralis major a small muscles uh, that is deep to the pectoralis major muscle and that's originated from the second to fifth rib uh, at some time that may from third to fifth as we if we look at this picture this is the first rib this is the second this is the third so it is being originated from the third fourth and fifth uh, so third and fifth maybe from second to fourth or from second to fifth rib that it means there is a very high variation among person to person in the um, um, this um, rib cage attachment of the uh, pectoral spider while the similar attachment in all person that is to the coracoid parts of the scapula uh, its main action is the abduction of the scapula and it rotates it downward as well as it elevates the rib during the force inhalation. So it is also uh, a necessary inhalatory muscle. Uh, when we need that force inhalation muscle, so this is, this is that extra muscle which will work uh, for the elevation of the ribs. So mostly this is a scapular abductor and, and as well as the downward rotator and the medial pectoral knob that supply this muscle. The serratus interior uh, that is a uh, muscles which originated from the ribs interiorly uh, and then it move uh, posteriorly and attach on the uh, whatever border of the inferior angle of the scapula. Uh, this muscle um, uh, is being originated from the uh, second to ninth or from first to ninth ribs. So that is being attachment of the um, serratus interior uh, rib cage muscle uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So these are the those serratus interior which are superior at or nine ribs um, attachment and then it move. Um, um, posteriorly and then merge together to form uh, an insertion point on the vertebral border. Vertebral border means the border which is near to the spine, uh, which we can say the medial border. This is the lateral border, this is the medial border. Uh, so they are attached to the middle border, uh, the vertebral border, as well as the inferior angle of the scapula. The inferior angle is that junction between the um, uh, what uh, the vertebral border and as well as the lateral border. This serratus interior action is actually that is the abductor of the scapula, uh, as well as it is just like the pectoralis minor that is elevator of the ribs as well. Um, but its function uh, it elevate the ribs in that case when there is uh, no moment at the scapula. So its initial moment is uh, the rotation and abduction of the scapula. Um, but when the scapula is stabilized, then its another function is to elevate the ribs. Uh, this muscle is also known as the boxer muscle. Uh, so its action is abduction and rotate the scapula pole. And when the scapula is stabilized, it elevate the ribs as well. A long thoracic nerve is going to supply uh, the motor nerve supplied to the uh, this serratus interior. So, uh, trapezius muscle is actually um, a diamond-like uh, uh, muscle. This is that uh, trapezius muscle. So, it consists of three fibers. This is the uh, upper trapezius, the middle trapezius, and the lower trapezius. So that is a diamond shape uh, on both sides, diamond shape trapezius muscle. So, superior or the upper fiber, that is middle fiber or the inferior fiber or the lower fiber. Uh, the um, superior or the upper fiber are known as the upper trap uh, or the upper trapezius. The middle fiber are known as the middle trapezius. And the inferior or the lower fibers of the trapezius muscle, they are known as the 
lower uh, two pages. Uh, they are very important and they have a very big role, significant role in the movement of the uh, scapula and accessory nerve and as well as the cervical spinal nerve they are going to supply uh, these uh, muscles. So the upper um, superior and the upper trap, now we will discuss the origin and insertion and action of the each um, fibers of this trapezius. So first of them. Uh, the upper or superior fibro trapezius, which we can term as the upper trapezius, here yeah, simply shall be known as the upper trap vessel. Uh, the origin of this uh, upper trap vessel, this is the middle one third of the superior nuchal line. Uh, there are four lines uh, on the um, base of the skull posteriorly. Um, this is the uh, highest nuchal line, the superior nuchal line and then the middle nuchal, uh, nuchal line and then the inferior uh, nuchal line. So four lines are there and these lines give attachment to the different muscle as well as different ligaments. So, so the higher nuchal line, that superior nuchal line, the middle nuchal line and the uh, inferior nuchal line. This uh, uh, upper trapezius is being originated from the medial one third, not from the, all the superior nuchal line. That is from the mid of the, you can say that from the mid of the uh, center of the uh, lower um, uh, skull or from the base of the skull posteriorly. So this is medial one third of the superior nuchal line. Uh, that was also originated from the external occipital protuberance, which is a small protuberance from the on the back. Uh, and the base of the skull posteriorly as well as uh, it also originated from the ligamentum uh, nuchae. The ligamentum nuchae that can also known as the uh, nuchal ligament and actually this ligament is a broad epineurotic ligament which cover the uh, cervical uh, different muscles. Um, the the partner of this nuchal ligament in the thoracic in the lumbar region and that is the uh, thoracolumbar fascia. Uh, that thoracolumbar fascia is uh, being replaced in the cervical region by the ligamentum nuchae. If we look at the thoracolumbar fascia, which is uh, again um, covering epineurotic structures, um, covering the lumbar area as well as the uh, thoracic area. So, uh, unlike uh, the ligamentum nuchae, the thoracic lumbar fascia is being then divided into three layers uh, the middle layer, and the interior layer, and the posterior layer. Uh, we are not going into detail, just remember so that uh, thoracic lumbar fascia is divided into three layers. The one layer is which is present between um, which is present, uh, present posterior to the erectus spinae, the middle layer is present between. Uh, the erectus spinae are the other deep muscles of the posterior and between the quadratus number while the interior um, um, layer of the thoracolumbar fascia uh, that is being present between the source major and the quadratus number some authors have, they have reported that the interior uh, layer of this um, thoracolumbar number fascia that is the part of the abdominal fascia but uh, leave that topic that is um, beyond this uh, scope of this today session so uh, the upper trap is being originated from different areas that is from the center of the base of the skull which means specifically from the medial one third of the superior nuchal line uh, from the external occipital uh, protuberance and as well as that also originated from the uh, nuchal ligament uh, then it uh, moved downward and then it is attached to the uh, posterior border of the lateral one third of the uh, clavicle uh, and its action is to the scapular elevation. Yeah, we, it is being used when we are going to shrug our shoulder. So this muscle is being activated and its main function is the shoulder shrugging or the scapular elevation or elevation of the uh, that um, shoulder girdle. The middle trapezius uh, fibers uh, that is being uh, smallest uh, muscles uh, present between the upper and below trap. Uh, these are triangular shaped muscles which originated from um, in the middle and its medial attachment is broader as compared uh, to the lateral attachment. Its medial attachment is uh, uh, on the spinous process of the superior uh, dorsal vertebra this is from the 
T1, T2, T3, T4, and the T5. Uh, it means it, uh, it, is, it is the uh, T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. And then it travel and <coughs> it merges together to form a narrow exertion on the uh, medial border of the uh, ecromium process of the scapula, as well as it is also inserted on the superior border of the uh, spine. This is the, actually the spine. So this muscle is being attached on the uh, superior part of the scapula as well as the medial uh, uh, portion of the acromion process. Uh, again, its um, uh, main action is the uh, uh, help in the rhombides. It is uh, just scapular adduction as well as it help in the retraction of the scapula. The lower trap again um, a triangular shape, but it is a very uh, elongated and larger muscle as compared to the upper and the middle trap. Uh, this is known as the inferior trap or the lower trap muscle. Um, its origin is from the um, below uh, spinous spines of the dorsal vertebra, from the superior dorsal vertebra, from the one, two, three, four, five. This is the middle trap. Uh, and then from below the uh, vertebra, uh, from the um, T6, T7, T8, T9, uh, 10, and then 11 and 12, from the spinous process of these uh, lower uh, thoracic spine or the dorsal spine, dorsal spine, dorsal vertebra, thoracic vertebra, that give origin, origin to the this lower trap and these muscles then again uh, move laterally as well as they merge together to attach uh, to the spine of the scapula just below the attachment of the bedal trap. Bedal trap is mostly attached to the superior of the, that spine while the uh, lower trap is attached to the uh, posterior as well as the inferior surface of the uh, that uh, scapular spine. Its action is if we look at uh, its uh, orientation, uh, these muscles that just when they are shrugging up the shoulder, so the upper trap just uh, as it is present from the clavicle, it will move the sh sh shoulder in the abroad direction. But when we are going downward, this uh, lower trap that move and uh, that just uh, contract and con during the contraction, they just uh, uh, push that uh, scapula in the downward direction. So basically, it is main function is the scapular depression, but this muscle is also involved in the adduction of the scapula. So uh, if we look at these, well, this is the trapezius muscles. Okay. This is the middle trapezius, then the lower trapezius muscle. This is the lower border of the. Uh, scapula. This is the upper border of the scapula. So the upper border is mean this is the middle trap, this is the lower trap. And these are the rhomboids minor and these larger muscles are the rhomboid major which is present between the spine as well as the vertebral border of the scapula. This is the lateral border of the scapula, this is the uh, vertebral border and this is the uh, inferior angle of the scapula, this is the superior angle of the scapula. So during uh, the, these uh, rhomboid minor and rhomboid uh, major, they when they contract, they just uh, bring this vertebral border nearer to the uh, spine on the both sides. So hence they work in the um, uh, um, retraction of the scapula. The levator scapulae a small muscle uh, that also uh, work uh, in the elevation of the shoulder but this levator scapulae that uh, elevate the medial um, part of the scapula as well the lateral part is most elevated by the upper trap muscle and the origin of this uh, levator scapulae it is originated from the transverse passes of the uh, C1, C2, C3, C4 or sometimes there may be origin from the C5 as well. So these uh, the superior cervical whatever uh, transverse process that give attachment to the levator scapulae and this levator scapulae then move uh, inferiorly as well as it move from medial to the lateral so we can say that uh, this muscle then move inferior laterally and then it give uh, uh, 
use attachment on the superior vertebral border of the uh, scapula. This is the superior um, vertebral border. So, when there is contraction in this muscle, it will just elevate that scapula, while this area of the scapula that is being elevated by the uh, upper trap. So, these upper trapezius as well as the levator scapula, they both are uh, required for the uh, elevation or uh, the scapulars. Uh, as we can say that they both are required for the uh, simultaneous shrugging of the complete shoulder. Its main action is that we have discussed elevate the scapula and it also uh, downward rotate uh, the scapula. The dorsal scapular nerve and the cervical spinal nerve they um, give nerve supply to this elevator scapula. Uh, its name mentioned that it is a muscle which elevate the scapula. So, yeah, so elevator scapula. The rhomboids major and minor, these both muscles are the uh, retractor of the uh, scapula. They are both um, going to uh, adduct the scapula as well as they are the downward uh, rotator. Besides its kinetic function of the rhomboid, uh, rhomboid major and minor also play a very important role in the stabilization of that uh, pectoral girdle. So, the, its origin is from the uh, second to fifth uh, thoracic uh, vertebra uh, to the first thoracic vertebra, the rhomboid minor is attached, and its insertion is on the vertebral border of the scapula, but uh, uh, inferior to the spine of the scapula because uh, superior to the spine of the scapula, this um, attach this is attachment side of the uh, levator scapulae. So levator scapulae is attached here, and below that, at the level of the scapula, the attachment is for the rhomboid minor, and then below the uh, inferior to the uh, scapular uh, spine, uh, the attachment side is for the uh, rhomboid major. Its main action is to elevate and uh, adduct the scapula uh, and it rotate downward and as well as stabilize the scapula. The dorsal scapular dub uh, is going to uh, supply this or a bite measure. Uh, so we will discuss the further muscles in the uh, next session. Uh, we will start from the rhomboid measure uh, in the next session. Thank you so much.